Hello and welcome to Passing Pathophysiology, Sodium Imbalances. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. We're going to be talking today about sodium. Sodium is our primary extracellular cation. Now I'm going to tell you more about what that means. So first of all, it is a positive ion in the body. We obtain it through the diet through sodium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. You can see there's a variety of different foods that contain sodium. Even if you're not adding salt to your food, you're still getting sodium from a variety of different foods. So what is sodium doing in the body? We mentioned that it's the primary extracellular cation. So what does it do? Sodium is responsible for moving fluid in the body. When you take a look at these two pictures here, you can see that we have before osmosis. So we have our solvent, we have our solution in this case here with a semi-permeable membrane. We can think of this whole piece here the same way we think about a cell. So the pure solvent side might be our intracellular or extracellular area, the solution, et cetera, with our semi-permeable membrane. Now notice after osmosis, fluid moves to where the sodium is and dilutes it. So now there's more fluid on the solution side, less on the solvent side. All right, let's take a look then. This is just looking at a little tube here. Let's take that into the body and talk about intracellular and extracellular sides here. On the extracellular side, notice that there are more sodium ions than there are potassium ions. So potassium is the K there, sodium is the Na. More sodium on the extracellular side, less sodium on the intracellular side, but on the intracellular side, we have more potassium. So potassium is responsible for controlling fluid balance in the cell. Sodium is responsible for controlling sodium balance outside the cell. So how does that happen? We have these little sodium potassium pumps and they are going to move sodium and potassium into the right proportions. If we have an extracellular sodium value of 142, that's sorry, in our normal range of our sodium in the bloodstream, we're going to end up having an intracellular sodium level of 10 milliequivalents per liter. So you can see there's a dramatic difference between intracellular and extracellular sodium in the body. And that's controlled by this sodium potassium pump. So sodium in the body maintains our extracellular water balance. So the water balance outside the cells maintains or main, is the main extracellular positive ion main intracellular positive ion is potassium, helps conduct nerve impulses, and is essential for muscle contraction. So it has additional functions beyond that of just controlling our fluid balance. So what if sodium is abnormal? Well, we call that either hypernatremia, too much sodium, or hyponatremia, not enough sodium. And again, that's going to cause fluid shifts in the body. So let's take a look at that in more detail. Hypernatremia. So this is a sodium level higher than 145 milliequivalents per liter. Causes too much ingestion. Not usually the situation where you just take in too much sodium. Insufficient ADH, antidiuretic hormone. This could be a cause for hypernatremia, especially in our patients who have head injuries. Diarrhea. Loss of a thirst mechanism. Again, you see that loss of thirst mechanism? That's probably coming from some kind of cerebral issue, stroke, head trauma, etc. So now look at these two pictures over on the right. The normal one in the middle, you see our sodiums there, the level of fluid we have, etc. And in hypernatremia, we have a lot more sodiums. Well, we can't have that. We can't have a lot more sodiums and not enough water. So water moves to where the sodium is. And that's what causes our symptoms of hypernatremia. We're going to get swelling of the cells and we're going to end up having potentially cerebral edema. All right, so let's take a look at the opposite situation here. Now we have hyponatremia. We don't have enough of our sodium. This is caused by excess water consumption. Now, that's not usually a situation that occurs with most people. There are 
some kinds of diseases that cause people to drink and drink. They feel like they can't get enough water, so they just keep drinking and drinking and drinking. Okay, so that might be a situation. It happens sometimes in runners. They're out, it's running, it's hot, and they're sweating, and they just start drinking lots and lots of water without replacing their electrolytes. That could end up causing hyponatremia. We have loss in our sweat, loss in diarrhea, loss in vomiting, diuretic drugs, excess antidiuretic hormone, and early acute renal failure. So these are some situations that can cause hyponatremia in our patient. Now notice those pictures. There's the normal again. Hyponatremia, not enough sodium. So water is going to tend to go out into the extracellular space and those cells become dehydrated. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here are our three situations here. We have a hyponatonic or hypotonic type of situation where water is rushing into the cell, the cell swells, and the cell bursts. We have isotonic where we have a normal cell and normal fluid moving in and out. Then we have a hypertonic situation where we're sucking the water out of the cell and into the extracellular space. So if there's too much sodium in the body we're over here on tight hypertonic and we're sucking water out and dehydrating the cell too little sodium in the body then the extracellular space is going to have more sodium or less sodium than what is in the cell so water rushes into the cell the cell gets bigger like a balloon and bursts so what are the symptoms of these diseases hypernatremia we have fluid shifts out of the brain cells. And so this is the main problem that we see with our sodium imbalances. Yeah, you can get the skin turgor issues, etc. But the main problem we see is going to be with the brain cells. Now, will you go back and think about those cells we just looked at? We can't have dehydrated cells or blown up cells because of fluid shifts. That's happening to the brain cells too. And that's not good. We're going to end up with weakness, agitation, and potentially severe cerebral edema and death. Decreased urine output, weakness, agitation, thirst. And this is the reason why most people won't develop hypernatremia. You get thirsty and you drink. Manifestations of a low sodium level include pulmonary edema, cerebral edema, hypovolemia, and a decreased blood pressure. So this person's gonna look like they're in shock and so then we find out they have a low sodium level and we can start to thank you for joining me for passing pathophysiology sodium imbalances my name is david woodruff and until next time bye now